Hi, it's Heather from Think It Works, and today I'm going to share with you this SVG bundle so that you can cut and then construct your very own electric candle holders and shades. Now, it goes without saying that because this is made from paper, it must not be used with candles that have a real flame. Electric candles only. You can grab your own copy of the SVG bundle and also access a video on the Cricut Maker settings for all of the pieces. There's a link in the description. The candle shades for this project needed to have beautiful translucent paper. And I found a wonderful tutorial from Nick the Booksmith on making do-it-yourself glassine. So this is a variation on the technique that she pioneered. I'm using tracing paper, Versamark, and super fine clear embossing powder together with a beautiful script stamp by Tim Holtz. This is going to create a resist. So as I apply layers of do-it-yourself coffee stain and rub that into the tracing paper, using a cosmetic sponge, and then follow up using a dark brown spray ink, you can begin to see that the areas of script that have been embossed with the clear powder remain subtly white. Now, to remove the embossing powder completely, I place the sheets between two layers of deli paper. And with a crafting iron on the very highest setting with no steam, I gently and slowly melt the embossing powder and it transfers from the tracing paper onto the deli paper. This reveals the beautiful, shiny, translucent paper that is created. But there's one more step that we'll take in order to make it even more translucent and glistening. For this next step, I'm reaching for one of my all-time favorite products, and that is Rust-Oleum Two-Time Ultra Cover in Gloss Clear. According to Nick's tutorial, this is to be sprayed onto both sides of the paper, and once I've done that, it's incredibly translucent and very robust. I selected a set of four of these electric tapers. Now, these pieces all go together. This will be the bottom of the lampshade. This is the very top. This is the framework of the lampshade itself. We have pieces of acetate and a decorative panel to go on the exterior of the lampshade. These pieces of chipboard get laminated together with layers of adhesive and hardened with super glue. There are a lot of layers for some of these pieces, and that's because we're actually building up a very sturdy candlestick that's going to hold our electric tapers very securely and last for years to come. You'll see what all of these pieces are for as we go through the build process. These simple squares make up the bottom layers of the candlestick itself. Let's get started by layering together the translucent panels that will filter the light in the most beautiful way. We'll be building up layers of the specialty paper we created, the acetate panels, and then on top, we'll add those decorative panels. I'm going to place a thin layer of Super 77 spray adhesive on the acetate panels, and then press them directly onto the back of our specialty paper. Then the excess just gets trimmed away with a pair of scissors. Now it's time to begin reinforcing all of the score lines. This funny tool that you see me using is what's called a hand seamer and it's used for sheet metal work. 
but it's actually perfect for helping to create nice sharp creases in a substance like lightweight chipboard. I just love this thing. It makes it very easy to get nice crisp corners and on a project like this one that is super helpful. So I'm pre-bending all of the score lines and for some of them I'm reinforcing those folds with a bone folder. I'm taking care to reinforce all of these corners because the next step is going to be spray painting the surface of all of these pieces of chipboard inside and out and I want to make sure that those corners are crisp. I'm always experimenting with new materials and this Yoohoo glue is something that I've seen paper crafters from around the world singing the praises of. So I thought I'd give it a try for this project. I experimented with using it to apply the acetate and paper panels inside the frame that will make up the shade. There are some things I like about it and some things that are a little disappointing. What I like is that it does have a relatively quick grab, but not as quick as Fabri-Tac. It also does create a few small strings, but not as many as Fabri-Tac. So there are pluses and minuses. What you see me doing here is using those flaps at the end of each of these two pieces to create joins between them. Press them firmly together and fold the piece out carefully and you'll end up with this. This piece is for the very top and I turn the shade over and then press this into place from below. Again, here I'm using Fabri-Tac because it's so strong and it gives you an almost instant bond. This piece will go underneath the bottom of the shade. It's not quite as important that this grab as quickly. So I'm going back to using the Yoohoo for this operation. Each of these flaps is getting tucked inside of the construction and it is a little bit fiddly. However, with patience and persistence, you'll get the hang of it. And the end result is going to be a very sturdy shade. There. We'll let that adhesive set up now. Now I'm going to add the decorative panels onto the exterior of the shade. I think the Yuhu worked quite well for this operation. It wasn't very messy and it dried quite quickly. Now we're going to start laminating together all of these layers. These ring-like structures get glued together one on top of the other with a good quality adhesive. I'm using Zig two-way glue because I really like it and because it comes in a pen so it makes it very easy to dispense a small bead of adhesive without getting it absolutely everywhere which I'm very prone to doing. As each layer gets added I do my best to line it up with the one beneath but I'm not perfect and you probably won't be either so 
As soon as the glue has had a chance to cure, you can begin to sand away the excess. I'm doing this prior to hardening with super glue because frankly, it's a lot easier to sand at this stage. I'm going to be working with Starbond Super Fast Thin Super Glue. This stuff is wonderful, but please be sure to use adequate ventilation and follow all the safety measures necessary. You'll need one of these ring-like structures for each of your candle shades. Now I'm going to begin laminating the bases. Again, Zig two-way glue is used to build up the layers. I do my best to make sure that they're all aligned. I'm reinforcing these with a brayer and I will be duplicating that same process for the set of smaller squares. Building them up and making certain that they are thoroughly bonded. These shapes also get layered one on top of the other. And again, I like to sand them at this stage prior to applying the hardening technique using super glue. A pair of tweezers really comes in handy. And an old gift card helps smooth the super glue all over the flat surfaces. This set of shapes will be the upper flange of the candle holder. Now I'm just neatening up all of the pieces, some of them prior to hardening and some of them afterward and sometimes both. These pieces of black cardstock will create a nice finished surface for the upper flange and the lower part of the candlestick cylinder. Now I'll harden that black cardstock with super glue. These round apertures are going to help us with the next phase of construction. Let's build up the base by centering the smaller square on top of the larger one. And then this piece gets centered as close as you can get to perfectly in the middle of both of them. Cut a strip of black cardstock equal to the height that you would like your candlestick to be and then roll it around a cylindrical object. Pull it tight so that it's about the size of a shotgun shell and then fit it inside of your candlestick base and allow it to unroll just enough so that it fits perfectly into that circular aperture. Apply adhesive and hold it tight and yep, this is messy. Glue everywhere. Now I'm using sticky backed craft foam cut into a very narrow strip in order to line the inside of that upper flange. That will help it to rest comfortably against the top of the cardstock cylinder we've created. Once you've fitted the cylinder 
inside of that upper flange, turn the piece over and add adhesive around the circumference. That's going to hold everything very securely. I add adhesive around the inside of the lower flange and then insert the cylinder. There. It bonds almost instantly. Excellent. To smooth out the upper surface, I'm going to be using Popper's Bondo. I spoon a little bit of baking soda onto that upper surface, allowing it to infiltrate some of the little cracks that appear around the edge. I brush away the excess and then drip super glue onto the baking soda. It will cure and harden almost immediately into an incredibly tough substance. I repeat this process as often as is necessary to fill in all of the cracks. Super glue and baking soda is also added around the perimeter of the base just to make certain that everything is as strong as it can be. A metal file really helps at this stage. Now that the candle holder is constructed, it's time to give it a coat of black spray paint along with the little ring structures. Yep, I'm being messy with the glue again. This circular piece gets glued right over that central aperture on the base of the shade. A gold paint pen is used to create some rugged pinstriping effects around the edges of the piece. One of the things I appreciate about these particular paint pens is that the paint dries almost immediately. You can do this detailing in a matter of minutes. I really like the antique vibe that this adds to the piece. And there's something really satisfying about getting all those edges just so. Once the pinstriping is complete, I add a final top coat in the form of pure super glue very gently smoothed across the upper surface. This creates a look almost like antique lacquer. I really, really like it. Okay, now it's time to put everything together. The taper is fitted into the base and to make sure that the shade fits snugly around the cylinder of the taper, I'm adding two little snippets of sticky back foam, one on either side of that circular hole. This creates just enough resistance so that the shade can be pressed onto the taper and it stays perfectly in place. I continue to be delighted and enthralled by the myriad possibilities that the Cricut Maker has brought into my creative life. I hope that seeing this little demonstration of how it can be used to enhance your home decor has been helpful to you in some way, my friends. Don't forget to stop by the blog post and grab your free SVG bundle. As always, 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.